Hi, I'm Shane with EGR.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install BMW's Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Hitch. Our underbed gooseneck hitch is not only going to allow us to pull our gooseneck trailers, but when we're not pulling a trailer, it's going to give us total bed access. One of the nice things about this hitch is it will also allow you to pull a fifth wheel trailer. It's going to be compatible with BMW's companion fifth wheel hitch. It's going to be a single spring-loaded pin that's going to lock into place. It's going to take a 2 and 5 16 ball. It's going to come in your kit. What you'll notice uh, that's going to set this apart from others is that the base of our ball is actually going to be square. What this allows or keeps it from doing is it keeps the ball from spinning in the hole. These edges, or the corners, kind of have a little rounded edge to them. This keeps any dirt and debris from building up down inside the hole. Our ball is going to be 2 and 5 sixteenths. We're going to have a 7,500 pound vertical load limit, which is straight down on the ball. 30,000 pound gross trailer weight. Now, when we're not using it or we're not hauling anything, we can take our ball, flip it over, slide it back down inside the hitch, again, giving us total bed access. Our safety chain loops are gonna be spring-loaded, which helps them stay down nice and tight to the bed of the truck when not in use. Our center section is gonna be completely under the bed of the truck. It's going to be secured with two cross members that span from frame rail to frame rail. We're going to have a frame bracket for each side. Our frame bracket attaches to our cross members, attaches to our frame, and attaches to a U-bolt that spans around the back side of the frame. All of our components here are going to be constructed of a steel with a nice gray powder coat finish. We're going to have a rubber coated handle that's going to allow us to pull our pin out so we can remove our ball or insert our ball. Once we have it inserted, we're gonna twist the handle and it's gonna lock our pin in place into our ball. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to lower your spare tire. That's where we remove our spare tire. While we're under the truck, we're gonna go ahead and remove our, the heat uh, section of our heat shield. Our hat channel runs right above our axle. We wanna cut our heat shield right in front of it, all the way up to the next hat channel, we're going to cut right behind it. So we're cutting the center section out of our heat shield. And I'm just going to use 10 snips. Uh, however you want to cut it. If, you're, if you use anything that, that uh, is electric, just remember your gas tank's right here. Just be aware of that. Now if you have any of this edge just protruding past this hat channel, take a hammer and just kind of flatten it out here. Then do the same thing with the front up here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lower our exhaust to help us when we uh, put in our center section. Now, directions tell you to do this right before we go in to do our center section. It might be easier if you do this before you cut your heat shield out. It might make it a little bit easier to cut the section that's right over this bend here. Completely up to you. Spray some lubricant on your hanger and just take a pry bar and pry it off the end of the post. You'll have three of them that we're going to do. We're going to do this one. You're going to have two right in front of the axle. In the bed of our truck, we need to mark it out so we can draw our four inch hole for our gooseneck. Now, you're going to measure per the instructions, per your bed size. Keep in mind, if you have a drop-in bed liner, it's probably easier to take that out when drilling this hole. Uh, and if you have a spray-in bed liner, you also need to take into account that. Just follow the instructions uh, on which bed liner you have. We're going to measure from the edge of the bed straight up the center, and we're going to put a mark. And I'm just using a paint marker. Once you find that mark per the instructions, you're going to measure between your wheel wells to find center. So then we're just going to split that number in half. Once you find your center, make your mark. Four inch hole saw blade. So what I like to do, if you see my board here, uh, if you take a piece of plywood, just drill a four inch hole in it or four and an eighth inch hole. So when we're drilling with our uh, hole saw bit, when it starts hitting that metal and grabbing on, 
it doesn't kick it all over the place. This board's gonna help keep it in a good circle. Another thing I suggest when doing this, don't just hold it with your hand. Take it and set it up against the back of your leg. Because if it grabs, it's gonna kick this thing sideways and it can hurt you. Another thing, uh, before you start drilling all the way through, just make sure there's nothing in that area that you're gonna damage. It's a good idea to take a file and knock the burrs off that are around the inside of the hole. Clean up all of our shavings. I'm gonna take some Rust-Oleum clear coat. Uh, if you have a black bed, black uh, Rust-Oleum paint, anything, just to kind of cover up that bare metal uh, to reduce the risk of uh, rust and corrosion later on. On our passenger side, if you have a fender liner, go ahead and remove it. Just held in place with a couple of screws that run along the inside here. Then, this hat channel that runs over our uh, rear axle, on the front side of it, we're gonna measure from that edge up six and a half inches and put a mark. That's gonna be our center mark. We want a one inch wide mark. Half inch forward, half inch back, because it's our one inch, and then we're half inch up. So you can see how I kind of have it in a triangle there. Now we're gonna cut that piece out so we can slide our cross member in place. It's gonna take a Dremel tool uh, with the cutting blade on it. Now we'll take our front cross member, it looks like this. We'll make sure when we put it in that these holes are facing towards the back of the vehicle. This flat flange here is gonna be, is actually gonna sit on the bottom of the bed. So we're gonna slide it right through just like that. Now it's a good idea to go underneath the vehicle and slide it under the rest of the way so you don't damage any of your brake lines or anything from uh, in your fuel area, fuel tank area. Turn your bar up like this, face your holes towards the back. In your kit, you're gonna have a rubber O-ring. You're gonna take your half inch by inch and a half bolt we're gonna put it into the second hole and we're gonna use the rubber O-ring to help secure the bolt in there. And it might be easier if you put it in before you flip that up. It's kind of hard to reach over that fuel tank. We're gonna take it. We're gonna push it about four inches in front of our hole. Uh, we're kind of stuck here with their uh, shock mount. So we're just gonna go ahead and push it all the way up to our shock mount, just like that. And then we'll install our rear cross member. Take your rear cross member. It's gonna have threaded holes in it. Most of the time, these are gonna have to be cleaned out um, because when they powder coat these, the powder coat gets down inside of there. Take your bolt that you're gonna be using. It's your half inch by one and a half inch bolt. and See if you can hand thread it in. If you can't hand thread it in there, then it needs to be cleaned out. This one is actually getting hung up. I'm gonna clean it out anyway, even though I am getting it to go through. I don't wanna take a chance of the threads crossing. Couple ways to clean it out. Uh, use a tap to do it, or if you don't have a tap, if you have a bolt that's the same size, just make sure the thread count's the same. Uh, take the Dremel tool, cut a few notches in it, one straight down like this, one and one, to uh, give it some grooves, and then you can use that bolt to uh, tap it out. Rear cross member, we're just gonna slide it, kind of just like we did the front one, get it about part of the way in there, and then go underneath the truck and slide it in the rest of the way. Make sure you watch here on our driver's side. You have your uh, hard brake lines. We want to make sure we're not going to damage those. So just be careful when sliding this over. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you now, the holes, if you notice, they are closer to one side than the other. 
We want them to be towards the floor, so we want the, uh, when we rotate it, we're gonna rotate this side up, just like this. And we're gonna go right up against this hat channel, like this. And it might be easier to get a pair of uh, channel locks, grab that, and then pop it into place, which I think is what we're gonna have to do. Just grab it like this, just like that. Again, watch your lines over there. And then push it all the way back up against our hat channel, just like that. Take your center section. You'll notice that the hole is more towards one side. That's going to be towards the back of the vehicle. We're going to line this up with the hole we have in the bed of the truck. Kind of go over our fuel tank. Get that lined up on that bolt. For the front of our center section, half inch by one and a half inch. We're going to slide it through like this. And then we're going to do a lock washer and a nut. Do the same thing for that one. That's it. And then our bolt up on top that we previously installed, we're going to do the same thing. Lock washer. And then our nut. For our back cross member and center section. Half inch by inch and a half inch bolt, lock washer, and then a flat washer. And you can see how I have them installed here. Now, a couple of things to have handy. You need a spacer block like this, carriage bolt, retaining clip, and you're going to need this oval shaped uh, spacer with the hole in it. We're going to take our spacer block and our bolt. We're gonna go inside this hole right here, and we're gonna do this on both sides of the vehicle. Like that. And we're gonna, and you wanna rotate that clockwise so that the spacer block hits the bottom of the frame rail. What that's gonna do is when we go to put on our nut, that allows the spacer block to catch so we have something to tighten onto it. Now we're gonna take our oval shaped spacer that is going to actually take up that space in the hole, like that. And then we're just gonna thread on the retaining clip. That's gonna hold our bolt in place. And make sure that that oval sleeve is lined up in the hole. I'll go ahead and get this retaining clip all the way up against there so it holds it in place. And then we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Now we'll install our side plates. You notice how our side plate looks. We want this section to be towards the front of the vehicle. This hole right here is going to go over the stud that we just installed in the frame rail. Put on a flat washer first. that. 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 And then for this back hole in our cross member, we want to Do the same thing what we did with all of our hardware in the back. Our bolt, black washer, flat washer. And then for our forward hole, take your hex bolt. We're gonna go from the front into the center. So we'll pass it through our front cross member and then through our side plate. Then we're gonna put on our flat washer our lock washer, and then the nut. Then you're going to do that same thing on the other side. We're going to have a frame clamp that looks like this, one for each side. 
You notice it has a notch cut out. That's gonna go at the top. You'll notice this wiring here. It's clipped in. I take a flathead screwdriver and pop that loose. That. That'll give us some room there. Take this. Go up. Kind of like that. We're gonna have a hole here in our frame bracket, and then we'll have one at the top also. We're gonna get those in those holes. And then for the threads, we're gonna put on a lock washer and a nut. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're centered, uh, that the rails, the cross members are pretty much in line equal distance from side to side. What I did is I got up in the bed and checked to see how uh, our hitch center here is centered in the hole. It looked like it was pulled back just a little bit. So to start our tightening sequence, I'm gonna start, we always start with the center section. I'm actually gonna start by tightening this front one first and kind of pull my hitch that way. We'll use a three quarter inch socket and wrench. Once you have your center section tightened, then you're going to torque that hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Then we want to tighten and torque our U-bolts uh, that are wrapped around the inside of our frame rail. I'm going to make sure when tightening these down, you tighten them and torque them, alternate back and forth. Don't just tighten one and torque it and then do the other one because then it gets off. So go back and forth, do a couple turns on one, a couple turns on the other until you get it up to uh, the manufacturer recommendations on the torque specs. Next bolt you need to tighten and torque are the two bolts from your frame bracket going into your cross members. Once you've tightened and torqued those, this stud here is gonna be the last one you tighten and torque. Now we're gonna install our handle. It might be easier to go from the outside in. You want it to go right through that slot. Like that. Line it up with that square there. We're gonna have a small bolt like this, small carriage bolt, going from this side. through your handle, and you'll put a flange nut on the back. And then go ahead and tighten that down. Now we're gonna drill out for our safety chain U-bolts. Uh, You're gonna have four sets of holes on each side of your center section. So if you notice right here in our bed, how we have a raised section and then a lowered section, we want the holes that line up with our drop section. So it looks like with this one, uh, we're gonna be using our two inside holes on each side. They're gonna line up right here on this edge. So we're gonna drill out the hole from the bottom. Um, they tell you in the instructions is to drill it out to a half inch. What I like to do is use a small drill bit, drill a pilot hole and try to center it in there, and then go up top and use either a step bit or even a half inch drill bit if you want and drill down from the top. It's a lot easier than trying to do it all from down here. Make sure you get any burrs off. What we want is we want this. Make sure to go over them with some uh, clear coat or paint or whatever, whatever it is that you're using again. Go ahead and drop these in place. Underneath the vehicle on your U-bolt, you want to take this spring, a Christmas tree spring. Make sure the larger end is up at the bottom of the hitch. We're going to slide it over the bolt and then you're going to put on this lock nut. You can do that on each one. Three quarter inch socket, we're gonna tighten these down. You notice the ones I have tightened over here. We only want the head of the bolt 
we want it to be flush with the edge of the uh, lock nut. Just like that. On our driver's side, where our handle is, you can see our fender liner kind of covers it a little bit. We're just going to cut out just a small square to give us access to it. I'm just going to use a utility knife to do that. Once you get everything tight and torqued down, go ahead and reinstall your exhaust, reinstall your passenger side fender liner and your spare tire. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the BMW Turnball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch with custom installation kit on our 2018 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.